Welcome back to the Positive Gains Podcast. Today, my special guest is pro MMA fighter, Dre Miley. Dre, what's up, man? How are you? I'm much. Just chilling, man. How about yourself? Doing real well. Thank you. Uh, so let's go over a little bit of background information. Um, you're competing in the, the Bantamweight. Uh, just how you got started in the MMA. Um, your journey so far and whatever else you'd like to share. Uh, okay. Well, I'm Dre Miley. Uh, I've been doing MMA for 15 years now. Uh, started when I was like 18 and, you know, I was just doing something to get my confidence back up for, you know, I had a car wreck when I was 17 and it wasn't my fault. Um, long story short, the guy driving was, you know, messed up the night before. Served to hit a tree, and the reason why my got cut because two people that was in the back seat was flying towards the windshield, and I tried to catch them. I flung back, and my face ate the dashboard. So that next year, I turned well. Next few months, I had turned eighteen, and I needed something to do. My family was pushing me to go do something, and I found MMA, you know, and then I never, never had no intention on fighting. And then one day, just my coach asked me if I wanted to. I was like, well, I'll try it, see if I like it. And my first fight, I was hooked. And then here we are, um, 17 fight. Well, yeah, roughly 17 fights later, here we are. So I, that's mostly what I did. I just got into it. Um, I'm pretty happy about how things are going right now, but I can always, it, things can always be better. How about, uh, like, did you wrestle in high school or anything like that? Mm-mm. They uh, uh, I did the traditional sports like football and basketball and track and stuff like that. We didn't in my hometown. We didn't have uh, sports like that. It was very traditional. Like most of these towns down here, they're very like it's baseball, basketball, f- football, and you know you being in UT shadow growing up here in Tennessee is what you're gonna run into. So that's all they were about. It was constantly getting you trying to get you to Neyland Stadium or whoever else. Did people look at you funny when, you know, you announced that you wanted to, you know, do fighting and, and things like that? Because, you know, you're saying from a, an area like that, it's probably predominantly football. Uh, I'm sure the fans are out there in MMA, but did you get some backlash initially? I got some shock when people are like, why MMA? So, yeah, it's like cage fighting. You know, it's you're like you wish you want to go in there and try to fight somebody. It's like, well, that's yeah, I got nothing else to do. So, yeah, it was a lot of pushback. My family wasn't. My mom was dope about it. She loved it. She thought it was a good idea. My dad was like, kind of like, I don't think you should. My grandfather is like anti against it. Like he supports me because he loves me, but like he's like, I will never go to your fights. My grandmother, she's been to at least three or four of my fights. Like wow. she'll like she's that drive and yeah. So it's it's a good time. It's always a good time whenever you're shocking all your family. One thing that stood out uh, to me about you is, you know, you were very uh, looking for a fight, you know, on, on social media. I mean, for, for months at a time, I would see you post, I'm available, I'm ready. Uh, you know, you're tagging uh, a Bellator and you're you're looking at all these different guys and, and uh, you know, you're putting yourself out there. So, uh, you know, from a marketing standpoint, can you can you talk a little bit about that, about just not being afraid because for one, you got to get in there, right? At the end of the day, you're going to fight a person, but to put yourself out there and, and call people out. Yeah. I think it was, it was mostly my coaches saying like, Hey, we got to sell ourselves. You know, everything you do, you're, you're walking business and right. you won't be able to buy into your business. You got to put your product out there. So, you know, the Bellator thing, you know, I got the deal, but then like, Something happened at the commission. I'm still not sure about it, but it is what it is. So the constant me poking and calling out people and to this day is still trying to get to that point. It's like, I need to be on a world stage. Like, that's just how it needs to happen. Like, it sounds very cocky, but it's it's true. Um, my past four fights, people have missed weight, like, bad. Like, they didn't even try, you know, and... You know, that type of professionalism and, you know, I, it's what I want. I want to be tested against the best people in the world, not necessarily the best people in my area or the best people in the state. I want to get tested by the best people in the world. So that's what that call-out's for. So 
I tried and I tried and I tried and Bellator loved it. Like the people that I saw to, they think, yes, keep doing that. The more you say it, the more it's going to happen. You know, they were all for it, but so. And the, the, the weight issue, you know, that's always a, a topic, um, whether it's boxing or, or uh, in the octagon. Um, so many people have, have uh, ideas on how things could be changed. I've heard some fighters say that, Instead of 20%, maybe it should be the 50% of your purse or um, after the second time, you know, maybe you're not going to get the fight, you know. So a lot of different things. When you talk about professionalism, how frustrating is it when these bouts get canceled, especially due to weight? It's incredibly frustrating. I've took a major hit, you know, with this camp because of – you know, the lack of professionalism. And, you know, I'm down for, like, you know, penalizing people all day long, but I don't feel like you should get a choice. I feel like if you're a professional, that's what amateurs are for. Amateurs are supposed to practice your way to get to professional. Like, at this point, right. you become professional. You kind of know you, you kind of know where you're at. You kind of know what weight class you need to be in. You kind of know what your diet has to be. You kind of know, you, you know yourself at this point. So, with all that, like, oh, they should give 20% shift. No, you shouldn't fight. Like, that's a breach of contract. Like, anything that you do in life, if you don't hold up your end of the deal, they get rid of you. That's right. pretty much saying, like, uh, if you go to your job and you're like, today, I'm not doing anything. They're like, well, you're, you're not getting paid for today. It's like, no, but I'm here. It's like, no, you don't get paid. You know, it's life is all about contracts, and people were trying about, well, it's just this, it's just that. It's like, no, that's money. That's that's those slap in the face to everybody that got this fight put on. It's a slap in the promoter's face. It's slapping the other team's face. It's slapping the commission's face. It's it's really unprofessional. And for anybody that condones missing weight, yeah, you should be a uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. That kind of goes into the highs and the lows of of uh, you know the sport and the, your career, right? As far as people missing weight, um, winning, losing. How do you juggle and balance, you know, like the family life? Because you, you know, you're putting a lot of work in at the gym and like you said, it's a job. I think a lot of people forget that, you know, it is a paid profession. Um, so how do you balance both uh, avenues? Uh, mostly it's my family. Like I try to get my kids in sports and my wife works a lot. I work a lot. And usually we try to make a day to where it's just about us doing something. Now, would that happen? Probably not. It's just how it goes. I know this past fight camp was terrible because, like, we were doing so much and kids wanted to do so much. And I didn't have the energy, like, the, the mental energy to do anything. So it it's hard. But at the same time, you have to have people around you to know what that life is. And... They've been around me for the past four years, so they know exactly what it takes. You know exactly what it is. So it's one of those things that takes a village. Absolutely. Uh, another thing, you know, is like favorite fighters, inspiration. Um, and it obviously could be yourself, but is there anybody that uh, with maybe different people that you've worked with that, you know, you like their style that maybe you tried to emulate? Not necessarily entirely, but take things different things from them um are there guys that you like watching just as a fan of the sport uh I, there's people i like watching i like watching like uh you know the max holloway i'm always excited about watching him kamara usman I actually like watching al Jermaine fight um diego lopez is starting to be a favorite of mine as well as patchy mix i take what they do and then I see if it applies to my game. If it doesn't apply to my game, cool. I never, I don't, I don't want to try to emulate really anybody because I feel like that will make me lose myself. And I'm not Kamar Usman. I'm not, you know, Max Holloway. I'm not Adesanya. I'm not any of those guys. They know as much as I know. It's just they've done it repetition-wise and they, they're comfortable in their own skin. Uh, so me learning how to be me is the most thing. Like if it, you know, if it meshes well with me, cool. So I would say the, I don't say I have a favorite fighter. I can't really say I do. So, you know, I trained with Vince for years watching him do stuff. And he does the exact same stuff that I do. So we're getting the same exact instruction all the time. So it's hard to say that I have a favorite fighter. 
going back to the the marketing part, you know, the business aspect, uh, one thing that uh, was interesting to me when you, you just brought up Aljo, you know, for years, people said that, you know, he's a boring, uh, he was a boring champion. And, and he felt like, uh, you know, at times that Dana didn't have his back and things like that. And, and some other guys, you know, they, they promote themselves on social media. And, and uh, I think Aljo had said at one point, you know, he'd had the belt and people were booing him and he couldn't understand why because he was, he was still winning. So mentality wise, uh, how hard is it in, in your opinion to try to secure a win, but yet put on a show? Cause it seems like it's a double edged sword. I feel like if you try to put on a show, you're going to lose. Um, unless you're going against somebody that you should absolutely smash. At this sport, man, MMA fans are so fickle, dude. You'll be the greatest thing smoking, and then next thing you know, you lose a fight. They're like, oh, he sucks. He's just, how do I know? Because I've been on both sides of that fence. Um, just Hell, just here recently, I got dragged through the mud because I did my job, did my professional part, and, you know, I got dragged through the mud by not fighting the guy. And I was like, well, no, I'm not going to do that. You didn't, you didn't do your part, so no. So, you know, it's... If you try to please the crowd, you're not gonna you're not gonna win. You might become a you know the drunken guy's favorite, but you're not gonna have it. You're not gonna have what you want. So I really don't care. If you're a fan of me, you're a fan of me because of how I fight. You're not a fan because of what comes out of my mouth. So right. that's how I feel. And you know, being an inspiration, uh, I'd, I'd like to know the feedback of of what maybe if people have taught or not taught you, told you. Um, you know, dealing with, you know, the eye injury and, and uh, you know, you're out there and you're doing it. I know a lot of people would say that even without any kind of, you know, ailment would not step in the octagon. But, you know, you're doing it, um, you know, you're doing it at a high level. So have people told you anything about, you know, being an inspiration? Yeah, quite a few people have said something to me about it. You know, they were like, oh, man, I look up to how you are, like, you know, you inspire us to do better. And they, these are outside people. Like, I don't see these people every single day. So, like, it's awesome that you have a fight. You fight with one eye, blah, blah. You know, they're doing the fan thing. They're talking really good. I really just don't try to be inspirational as much. And on the outside, I will be an inspiration. Like, yes, you can do it. You know, I'll be the biggest cheerleader advocating for everything. But anybody that's close to me knows that, like, I don't ever do too much to myself to be like, oh, you have to follow what I do. Right. Try to lead by example. It's like, whether you can or can't, you're right. So if I'm in the gym and I'm coaching, giving everybody my best, like showing you, hey, this is kind of how you should do things. Don't follow my lead per se, but follow the path that I'm showing you. Follow the path that the people before me showing, my coach is showing me because whatever I'm telling you, he's telling me. So, and so uh, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, people know me, they know me as a humanitarian. They don't know me so much as a fighter. So, yeah, somebody once said a quote, if, if all you're remembered for is, is your profession, then you really didn't leave an impact on the world. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, so you, you brought up um, uh, running, not clinics, but coaching uh, on the side, you know, offering people uh, extra help and things like that. Um, how's that. How's that been going for you? It's been picking up here recently. Um been doing a lot with some people who like want to fast track themselves to get to get more knowledge, not necessarily to fight, but like to defend themselves and stuff like that. So it's been picking up, you know, um, re right now, wrestling season is kind of like our off season, our freestyle on Greco season. So, well, I have to wait to around like October or so to get to see everybody there and do things. But most of the time, it's usually kids will ask questions or I even sometimes have some of the wrestlers just pop up out of nowhere. They'll come on. A, so today is wrestle Wednesday at our gym. And I'm the one that really, that runs on Wednesdays. So they usually come in and it's just wrestling and teach everybody how to wrestle and learn how to wrestle effectively. So yeah, I'm always, always down for help people. Like it's, I feel like, like you said, you, got to leave a lasting impression on people right it's like oh this dude fall like well what did you do for everybody else that's the way i gotta see it 
And how about advice, you know, for a person maybe trying to fight, you know, maybe they go into the gym, like you said, and they're not looking to fight. They're just looking for uh, self-defense, but maybe it turns into uh, a potential career. Uh, how would you try to help guide somebody that may want to follow in your footsteps? I will say enjoy training. Enjoy the highs and the lows of training. Do not try to get to the end. Do not try to fight. Because if you really want it, if you really want to fight, it will come to you. It's like much of anything in life. If you try to force something to happen, it's not going to happen. It's just, or it's not going to be as enjoyable as you thought it was. And you see it a lot. And it, and it does break my heart when I see people do that. Because some people have great promise. You know, man, it could be an absolute stud. And the next thing you know, they're just like falling off the wayside. So for anybody that's like, oh, I want to fight, dude, pump your brakes a little bit, jump in the gym, and be a sponge. Learn as much as you can. Be there as much as you can, you know, financially and, you know, physically. Be there as much as you can, but don't rush that in line. Don't rush to it because being a fighter is a vicious cycle. It is a vicious cycle. So you'll start with, say you do, you're on the track to fight. You train all day long, train, blah, blah, blah. And then your coach says, hey, you have a fight on such, such day. But now your mindset just switched to be like, well, I got to train super hard, which is dumb. So you should be training hard anyways. You train hard for the fight, comes down, you make your weight, right? You go fight, boom. And then the next day or the next day you come back in the gym, you got to do it all over again. But that the next day that you're training after your fight is probably the worst day because you just orientate yourself to like, I got to fight. I got to fight. Oh, I'm fighting. I'm fighting. And then the fight's over and you're like, oh, crap, it's Monday. Well, what do I do now? Or, you know, what do I need to work on now? So it's one of those weird things. So enjoy training. Don't don't rush it. Don't rush it. Just just train, be a sponge, and apply everything that you learn in sparring and live goes. Um, you know, so far in your career, you've been able to, um, you know, KO people, submissions, decisions. You know, you've kind of seen a little bit of everything. Is there a, a preference? Obviously, you want to win, but do you get a uh, – do you enjoy maybe a knockout or do you like submitting people more than, you know – the, the KO, like, do you, do you have a preference, I guess is what I'm asking? I would say, you know, KO is always cool. It's always cool. I only had one, so that I was always chasing it high. Me, personally, I like the decisions because mm -hmm. I – that's going to sound weird when I say it. I want to break people, not physically. I want to break you mentally. Like, I want you to understand that what you thought – was going to happen is not going to happen so it's one of those things like if i can make you if i can make it to a match where you're like oh my god i gotta get out of here and i can make you quit on you then i'm i'm good because i'm not going to quit i'm not going to quit like you literally have to put me out you have to really break me for me to do that so it's one of those type things uh and actually last thing and i know you're a fan of the of this past card. I wanted to know your thoughts on uh, the UFC 300 card. Most people say that that was, you know, the greatest combat uh, or card on combat uh, fighting. Uh, Dana White himself said that. I personally thought there was many great fights from the prelims. I enjoyed it um, from top to bottom. So I want to know your thoughts on the card. I absolutely love the card. Honestly, you know, a lot of the fights from start to finish was amazing. Like, I think the one fight that stood out to me the most is not the one everybody thinks it was. It was not the Max Holloway fight. It was actually the Figueroa and uh, Garbrandt fight. Garbrandt. Like, watching Figueroa actually be a bantamweight and actually do really well is really good. And then, you know, Cody Garbrandt is, you know, he's always a dangerous guy, but, like, seeing him, you know, descend down is getting tough, you know, yeah. and that's just gym wars are constantly getting punched in the face. The other one was Whaley versus Jean Janon. And yeah. oh my gosh, that was intense. I have never seen nobody go out and then like the fight still continued. Like that was <laughs> that was a complete drop of the ball. And yep. So By yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I honestly thought from top to bottom, every single fight delivered. 
So, yeah, I felt the same they way from the, from the prelims all the way to the main event. Um, yeah, you even if you didn't pay for it up until the main card, well, you got your money's worth on the prelims. So, um, yeah, hats off to them for uh, completing that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you coming on today, Dre. Um, wish nothing but the best for you. Um, I hope they get whatever it is figured out for you. Um, you know, with the promotion with Beltor. Um, but if not, I mean, you're moving forward either way. So, uh, you know, God bless you. And uh, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me on, man. So, I think Absolutely. Bellator PFL figure it out. UFC will figure it out. You know, it's it's an unfortunate situation, but you know, I known and we all known it was going to happen eventually to where they was going. Everybody was going to deny me, and <laughs> I've. I pretty much been shat on my whole whole MMA career by everybody. No one's really gave me a chance outside of the gym door, so I'm still getting slept on. And people are always like, "Well, your record's not good enough." It's like, I've lost to good people though. Like, I fought really good people, but you're gonna cheer for a guy or that is fighting cans, and you're thinking he's the best thing ever. So, so I don't know. It's it's frustrating, but at the same time, it's like you guys really don't know what you're talking about. So, yeah, they got to put you on the big stage and and then uh, lock the octagon and let you do the talking in there. That's wow. right. All these other people who keep sleeping on me, man. It's it's crazy. The other journalists like be sleeping on me, and it makes me so mad. It's like why why me? Why you got sleep on me? Like, let's give me a chance. We'll yeah. see. Lord knows. We'll see you, though. Yeah, best of luck to you. Um, you ever want to come back on, you're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Definitely will. Definitely will.